Is it possible for machines to think? Science fiction popularized the concept of artificially intelligent robots throughout the first part of the 20th century. It started with the Wizard of Oz's heartless Tin Man and continued with the humanoid robot who impersonated Maria in Metropolis. By the 1950s, a generation of scientists, mathematicians, and philosophers had culturally adopted the concept of artificial intelligence, or AI. Alan Turing, a young British polymath who investigated the mathematical possibilities of artificial intelligence, was one of these individuals. Why can't machines solve problems and make decisions the same way people do? According to Turing, humans use available information as well as reason to solve issues and make judgments. Computing Machinery and Intelligence, a 1950 study in which he described how to develop intelligent machines and how to assess their intelligence, followed this approach. Making the pursuit a reality. Regrettably, words are cheap. What prevented Turing from getting to work right away? First, computers had to undergo a fundamental transformation. Computers lacked a critical requirement for intelligence prior to 1949, they couldn't store commands, only execute them. To put it another way, computers might be told what to do but couldn't remember it. Second, computation was prohibitively costly. Leasing a computer in the early 1950s could cost up to $200,000 per month. Only prominent colleges and large technology firms could afford to take their time exploring these unexplored waters. To persuade funding sources that machine intelligence was worth pursuing, a proof of concept as well as support from high-profile persons were required. It all began with a conference. Alan Newell, Cliff Shaw, and Herbert Simon's logic theorist provided the proof of concept five years later. The logic theorist was a program developed by the Research and Development RAND, Corporation to simulate human problem-solving abilities. It was presented at the Dartmouth Summer Research Project on Artificial Intelligence PI, led by John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky in 1956, and is widely regarded as the first artificial intelligence program. McCarthy envisioning a big joint effort convened a historic conference that brought together prominent experts from many fields for an open-ended discussion on artificial intelligence, a phrase he invented at the occasion. Unfortunately, the conference fell short of McCarthy's expectations, people came and went as they liked, and no standard techniques for the subject were agreed upon. Despite this, everyone was united in their belief that AI could be achieved. The importance of this event cannot be overstated, since it ushered in the following two decades of AI development success and setbacks on a roller coaster. AI grew in popularity from 1957 to 1974. Computers grew quicker, cheaper, and more accessible as they could store more data. Machine learning algorithms developed as well, and individuals became better at determining which method to use for given tasks. Early demonstrations, such as Newell and Simon's General Problem Solver and Joseph Weizenbaum's Eliza, showed promise in problem solving and spoken language interpretation, respectively. These achievements, together with the support of renowned researchers, namely, the Zerpai attendees, persuaded government bodies like the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, to finance AI research at a number of institutions. The government was especially interested in a machine that could transcribe and translate spoken language and analyze large amounts of data quickly. The level of optimism was high, and the level of expectation was considerably higher. In three to eight years, we will have a machine with the general intellect of an average human being, Marvin Minsky told Life magazine in 1970. While the essential proof of principle had been established, there was still a long way to go before the final goals of natural language processing, abstract reasoning, and self-recognition could be realized. Breaking through the AI fog presented a pile of challenges. The largest problem was a lack of processing capability to perform anything useful. Computers couldn't store or analyze data quickly enough. To communicate, for example, one must know the meanings of a large number of words and be able to comprehend them in a variety of contexts. Computers were still millions of times too feeble to display intelligence, said Hans Moravec, a doctorate student of McCarthy at the time. As funds dried up, so did patients, and research came to a halt for 10 years. Two factors rekindled AI in the 1980s, an extension of the algorithmic toolset and an increase in funding. Deep learning techniques were pioneered by John Hopfield and David Rumelhart, which allowed computers to learn via experience. Edward Feigenbaum, on the other hand, pioneered expert systems that emulated the decision-making process of a human expert. The experts could obtain guidance from the computer after it asked an expert in a field how to respond in a certain situation. Once this was understood for practically every circumstance, non-experts could receive guidance from the computer. 
in industries expert systems were widely employed. As part of their fifth-generation computer project, the Japanese government invested substantially on expert systems and other AI-related projects FGCP. They invested $400 million between 1982 and 1990 in order to revolutionize computer processing, establish logic programming, and improve artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, the majority of the lofty objectives were not achieved. However, it may be claimed that the FGCP's indirect impact spurred a new generation of bright engineers and scientists. Regardless, the FGCP's funding dried up, and AI faded from view. Surprisingly, AI thrived in the absence of government support and public attention. Many of artificial intelligence's significant goals were accomplished throughout the 1990s and 2000s. Gary Kasparov, the reigning world chess champion and grandmaster, was beaten by IBM's Deep Blue, a chess playing computer program, in 1997. This widely publicized encounter marked the first time a reigning world chess champion was defeated by a computer, and it was a significant milestone toward the development of artificially intelligent decision-making software. Speech recognition software produced by Dragon Systems was installed on Windows in the same year. This was yet another significant stride forward, but this time in the direction of spoken language interpretation. There didn't seem to be any difficulty that machines couldn't solve. Even human emotion was fair game, as Kismet, a robot designed by Cynthia Brazel and capable of recognizing and displaying emotions, demonstrated. All wounds heal with time. What changed? We haven't gotten much smarter at how we code artificial intelligence. It turned out that the fundamental restriction of computer storage, which had held us back 30 years before, was no longer an issue. Moore's Law, which states that computer memory and speed double every year, had finally caught up with, and in many cases, beyond our requirements. This is exactly how Deep Blue defeated Gary Kasparov in 1997, and how Google's AlphaGo defeated Chinese Go champion Kei Jia just a few months ago. It provides some insight into the AI research roller coaster. We saturate AI capabilities to the level of our existing computational power, computer storage and processing speed, and then wait for Moore's Law to catch up. Artificial intelligence, AI, is omnipresent. We currently live in the big data era, in which we have the ability to collect massive amounts of data, are too onerous for a single individual to process. Artificial intelligence has already proven to be beneficial in a variety of industries, including technology, banking, marketing, and entertainment. We've seen that large data and vast computers just enables artificial intelligence to learn by brute force, even if algorithms don't improve much. Moore's law may be slowing down a little, but the increase in data hasn't slowed down at all. Breakthroughs in computer science, mathematics, or neurology could all be used to break past Moore's law ceiling. The long run. So, what does the future hold? AI language appears to be the next big thing in the near future. In fact, it has already begun. I can't recall the last time I phoned a company and spoke with a live person. Machines are even phoning me these days. Imagine having a fluid dialogue with an expert system, or having a chat in two languages that is being translated in real time. In the next 20 years, we can also expect to see self-driving cars on the road, and that is conservative. In the long run, the goal is general intelligence, or a machine that can perform all tasks better than humans. This is similar to the sentient robots that we're used to seeing in movies. It appears impossible to me that this could be completed in the next 50 years. Even if the capability exists, ethical concerns would serve as a significant impediment to implementation. We'll need to have a meaningful discourse about machine policy and ethics, ironically, both inherently human concerns, when that time comes, but better even before that time arrives, but for now, we'll let AI improve and run rampant in society. With a background in physics and genetics, Rockwell Enioha is a graduate student in the Department of Molecular Biology. Machine learning is being used in his current effort to model animal behavior. Rockwell spends his free time playing soccer and arguing banal subjects. If you enjoy this content please like and subscribe to the Tech Viking.